Welcome to Inside Sim Racing and my first look and impressions of the Oculus Rift CV1. I'm Darren Ganji and it's probably no secret to a lot of you that I wasn't a big fan of the Oculus DK2 that I reviewed back in January of 2015. Admittedly, part of it may have been my own fault due to the older PC that I tried to run it on. The other part was the steps I needed to take to get it running, the jutter effect I was getting from the head tracking, and the screen door effect that's been well documented by many community members and reviewers. So now I'm here to tell you my initial thoughts on the CV1. I ordered it from Amazon.com and paid $599 plus tax, and it arrived within two days from the time I placed the order. It came very nicely packaged and included the head mounted display, the head tracking unit, a remote control, and a wireless Xbox One controller. And here's some specs on the system that I'm running it with. I have an i5 4690K running the stock clock speed with an Asus Republic of Gamers Maximus 7 motherboard, 16 gigs of RAM with a Gigabyte GeForce GTX 1070 Gaming 8GD edition, and an SSD hard drive. My racing rig is the Sim Experience Stage 4 Simulator with an AccuForce Pro steering system, Fanatic Club Sport V3 pedals, DSD button panels, and a Thrustmaster TH8A shifter. I have three BenQ 2720Z monitors, of which I've disconnected two of them since I don't need them currently while using the Rift, and I'm running a fresh install of Windows 10. After I unpacked it, I mounted the head tracking sensor to my 8020 monitor stand by using some extra parts I had and then Velcroed it to this piece. Since the monitors don't move with my system, the head tracking unit doesn't move either. I think this may be the best way to mount it when using a motion simulator. I don't think I'd want that unit moving, which would most likely mess with the head tracking of the Rift. Next up, it was time to plug it in and get it set up. I'm not gonna go over the details of that because it's probably been done extensively here on YouTube. I did find though that my motherboard wasn't recognizing my USB 3.0 ports as 3.0, so I had to go in and change a configuration. I found that information in my, uh, my motherboard's documentation, and once I did, the Rift recognized both those USB ports as 3.0. And speaking of which, it said it would run on USB 2.0, but it says it runs best when connected to 3.0 ports. And I also highly recommend running a pretty high-end current video card because the specs and the, uh, the horsepower that you need to run this is pretty high. Once I got it plugged in, I did have an issue with the, uh, the enclosed remote, uh, but I ended up um, just pulling it apart, taking the battery out, pulling the pins up a little bit so that battery was making good contact, and then there was a firmware update, and I'm not sure if that was causing it initially or what the issue was, but after the firmware update, that remote worked fine. You can also use the supplied Xbox One controller to do your navigating, and mainly in the Oculus Home. Uh, I found that I didn't need either of those controllers once I was in every title that I was using. So after going through the demo, which was pretty damn cool, I tried out No Limits Roller Coaster 2. I know, it's not a racing simulator, but for some reason I was just gravitating towards trying that. And I also wanted my daughter to give it a try too. So as you may or may not know, motion sickness is an issue for some people with the Rift and I could feel some of those effects myself in No Limits too. My daughter Ashley then rode the virtual roller coaster with the Rift and had to stop after just two rides because of motion sickness. Matter of fact, she was dizzy and had a headache for the rest of the day. So you really need to take that into consideration when you're either trying the Rift or you own the Rift or if you're considering buying one. Next up, I had to jump into a simulator and iRacing was first up. I'd like to thank iRacing member Ben Saunders for posting and updating a very detailed tutorial with tweaks and recommendations on how to set it up. Matter of fact, I've posted that link in the description here of the show that, and you need to be an iRacing member to see that and it's specifically for iRacing. I've also tried it with Assetto Corsa, 
project cars. American Truck Simulator. And Dirt Rally. Turn left and right, don't come. So now on to my initial impressions. First up, I got to say the spatial awareness and basically the field of view, the scale is second to none. I mean, you, you cannot compare running with monitors to what it feels like to run with the Rift. And I'm assuming it's the same with the HTC Vive, but it really puts you in the driver's seat. On the flip side of that though, the screen door effect or lack of clarity in the image is still there in the CV1, which can definitely hurt your ability to see things in the distance. Now, I'm not sure if that's because of the resolution or because all the racing titles I tried it with aren't optimized, but it's definitely still there. Learning a track with the Rift is more difficult than it is with monitors due to that lack of clarity. If you already know a track's layout, it's not as big an issue. But if you're going to a track for the first time, finding some of those breaking points, especially if it's a blind corner, can definitely cause an issue. I've noticed the screen door effect more in some titles than others. For instance, when running American Truck Simulator, it's really cool looking around the cockpit and there was one truck that I could check out the sleeper cab in the back. but and, and even looking out the windshield is fine. But trying to see distance in your rear view mirrors when you've got you know, a big trailer hooked up to that tractor and that, that trailer's 48, 50 feet long and you're trying to see it going around a corner or you're trying to park it, it's definitely difficult. So back to racing and one of the things I love about that spatial awareness especially when running an open wheel car, is seeing exactly where your front tires are in relation to the track and being able to nail your apex and see that tire hit the mark. I definitely need to experiment more with settings and I've also tried using the Oculus SDK to increase the clarity, but need to spend more time with it. And like I said, I also realized that a lot of these titles aren't optimized to be used with the Rift yet and I'm hoping that that's gonna change and improve over time, but those are my initial impressions. Another thing to note is the head mounted display and the amount of heat that it generates. I definitely notice with some prolonged use and without a fan pointed directly at my head, it starts to get hot. I can see that being an issue during an endurance race or even a race that lasts more than a half an hour. I also need to figure out the best way to run the cable that comes up the back of the Rift because with my stage four motion simulator, it's definitely moving around quite a bit. I was thinking of maybe trying to clip it or something to the back of the seat, you know, with some slack so I, you know, I can move freely. But that cable, I, I wouldn't really say it's an issue, but you definitely notice it's there. One of the last things I want to discuss before wrapping up this first look is running the Rift with motion. When you have the motion profiles tuned properly in the Sim Experience Stage 4, for instance, it's an incredible experience that, in my opinion, enhances the VR immersion factor even more. With the Rift, Stage 4 motion, AccuForce force feedback, and my 5.1 surround sound system, I don't think I've had an experience like it that makes me feel like I'm really sitting in the cockpit of the car. In closing, I'm going to run a quick three-lap race in a Seto Corsa in the career mode, running the Fiat Abarth, and I'm going to comment as I go to give you guys some idea of what I'm experiencing. My co-host John Sable also now has a Rift, and we are going to do a final review on this together to compare notes and let you guys know what we both experienced and what we both think of it and tell you our opinion on whether or not you, we think you should get this or not. I think we're also gonna do some lap time comparisons and just visual comparisons running triple monitors versus the Rift. So I hope you enjoyed my first look and impressions of the Oculus Rift CV1. Now I'm gonna head over into the stage four, run that three lap race and uh, wrap this up. Hope you enjoyed it. Okay, so one of the first things you got to be aware of is how to reset your uh, your view. And I just set myself down, so I put me a little up in the cockpit. Now my wheel is close to where my virtual wheel is. I like having the virtual wheel turned on too. I also got to say I like how in Assetto Corsa, the UI, when you're in the Oculus, it's kind of wrapped around. It's, it's really neat. So... Um, 
anyway, another thing you got to be aware of is, or what you got to be set up for is where you place your keyboard and stuff like that. Man, you're basically using Braille, the Braille system here. I picked this combo because it's just an easy, quick career race, and it was kind of fun, and it's kind of cool to battle with these guys. Oh, oh, oh! So I was talking spatial awareness. Whoa, whoa, better pay attention here. Yeah, I felt like I could reach out and touch that guy that was next to me. Potentially doing a little bumping and grinding here because it's just so cool. You're, you're just right up on these guys. There's that guy right there. That dude is battling me. Ah, I should have made some setup changes to my car, I'm running a full tank. Look at him cut in front of me. I guess the AI is pretty good in. Uh, This version of Assetto. That guy is not giving me an inch. here see my performance running a solid 90 frames a second I think I'm pretty much all defaults here Let's see if I can hold this guy up. Oculus CV1. My first look at impressions. See you guys later.